I picked 30 and turned it over to Scott Moyers, the editor at Penguin Random House, and said, please help me. And so I liked the fact that at some point I was turning this over to someone who might see things that I wouldn't see. In the end, I was too close to the pieces, which made me both love them all and also hate them all, sort of like children. You include Mississippi, the 1962 integration at Ole Miss, with an emphasis on the football team because the football team played a pretty big role. Can you tell us a little about that? And that was the only year Ole Miss had ever been undefeated. Ole Miss had had really great football teams before and some good ones after, but that was the year they were undefeated. It's interesting to me growing up, I always thought that Archie Manning and those Ole Miss teams were the height of Ole Miss football. But really, even in 1967, 68, 69, 70, those successful Ole Miss teams were already colored by nostalgia because they were this last gasp and this muted second attempt for an already faded glory. I found that the success of the football team and the de-evolution of the campus at the same time, it was the fault line between two eras, between two cultures. You had one civilization at Apogee and another one just beginning. And I found that really, really interesting. An old Mississippi was dying and a new Mississippi was being born, and these things were happening side by side on a daily basis, sometimes at the very same moments, and sometimes so wound together as to be the same thing. What's your favorite sport? College football, probably. Is that your favorite sport to write about? You know, I, I like to watch it. I like Ole Miss games probably more than I like football itself. I like the experience. Uh, my favorite sport to write about is really determined by – the athletes and the people in the place. I'm much more interested in, I'm interested in why people play games. And I'm also interested in why people love them because I think sports are often a really simple appearing and yet very sophisticated instrument for passing along intergenerational codes and multi-generational codes and stories about family and place and who we are. I like to know why people cheer at these games. That's very interesting to me. What player have you written about the most? It's odd because I usually write about somebody once and then move on. I feel like I go so deep into people's lives. There's an unspoken promise that I'm only going to do this to you once. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's like, you know, I try not to, I don't want to be buddies with people after, and I don't go back to the well. And I only really keep in touch with one person I've ever written about because we just got to be really close. And that's Pat Riley. And that story is in this book. But, Most of the time, I feel like implicit in the promise of them letting me into their lives to such a degree is that when our time here is done, I leave their lives. Do those people that you write about, do many of them contact you afterwards to say thanks or you got it totally wrong or why didn't you include this? Why did you include this? I usually hear from other people who talk to them and usually they are shocked at how intimate it was. I mean, Michael Jordan asked his people how did he find all this stuff out? And they were like, uh, Michael, you told him. <laughs> uh, I mean, Urban Meyer found his portrayal dead accurate and very uncomfortable. I mean, I think a lot of people really want to be seen, but don't always understand what that looks like. I've never had one of these people, you know, I've never gotten sued or had people go on the offensive saying this isn't true, which feels good. You saved a very personal chapter for the last chapter, Holy Ground. That's about your dad? Yes, ma'am. He, uh, you know, he's uh, from Bentonia, Mississippi, which a lot of our listeners will know where that is. It's outside of Yazoo City, and he grew up outside of Bentonia. I mean, I think they thought the kids from Bentonia were city boys, you know, population 12 or whatever it was. And it's a story about his life and the actual arc is him wanting to go to Augusta national and dying before he made it. I think the larger arc is a boy from Bentonia imagines a life and chases it down and gets some things and doesn't get other things. And the next generation is left to sort out that journey and to figure out like, what is the responsibility of a son? Like how much, how many of the dreams of your father is it incumbent upon you to try to make come true? 
what levers do ghosts pull? How much gravitational pull do they have? And uh, I think it's a journey about generations making sense of each other. Right. Thompson is the most read writer in the history of ESPN and the author of The Cost of These Dreams, Sports Stories, and Other Serious Business. Right. Thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you so much.